Hey guys, Melanie here with a little quick coloring video for you today. Um, I have recently put this um, card on my blog. Um, my husband loves nativities, so when he saw this, he really liked it. And um, I have colored the images with our Stampin' Blends, their alcohol-based marker, and inking using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. It's very important to use quality paper and quality ink if you want your project not to bleed and if you want, um, you know, nothing to smear. And so it's really important that you use um, Memento Tuxedo Black with your alcohol markers. So I am doing Stampin' Blends today and I have already put my two nativity pieces on my Stamparatus. And the Stamparatus, I just finished a video a few minutes ago that's going live near too. And the Stamparatus has two sets of plates. So for the last video, I did the ornaments on that side. I did the sentiment on that side. And then since I knew I was doing two videos today, I went ahead and set up um, the nativity as well. So it is ready to go. And I'm, for the paper, uh, there are a lot of alcohol papers out there. I'm actually using, because the Stampin' Blends are more beginner, it, it can be begin really good beginner markers if you're looking at getting into alcohol markers. Um, they're really great for beginners because they have a light and a dark combo for every color that we have. And that makes blending easier. Um, if you're more advanced, um, this is a great marker to, um, you know, take along with you. And you can blend, and I'm going to show you actually on Mary's dress, you can blend multiple duos, multiple combos together. I'm going to be blending, this one here is the light seaside spray. Then you have the dark seaside spray. And then I've got the light night of navy and the dark night of navy. All those will work together. But for a beginner, it's good for them to just know light, dark. So if you're starting out, this is also a little cheaper than going like with Copic markers that are much more expensive. So um, we do offer them in two packs or combos and I'm gonna show you how to use them. So let's ink up our nativity. I'm gonna give a really good inking. The beauty about the Stamparatus, if you don't get it right the first time, you can go back and do it again. And just give this even pressure all around. I like to use the heel of my um, palm. Look at there. And if I wanted it a little darker, I could redo it some more and then go right back down on it. Perfect. I don't say perfect about a lot of stuff, so we're perfect there. Go ahead and just put the baby wipe here and move my Stamparatus out of the way. I don't need the ink anymore, so Mr. Tuxedo Black can go over there. Okay, let's bring in our markers. Now, for the hay, um, I have used the these lighter two, and this is actually ivory, which is what I'm gonna use for their skin as well. And then this one here is light crumb cake. So see, you can intermix um, all of the markers depending on what you're after, but um, you know, you don't have to. So in this situation I am, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and this is where you would see um, bleeding right now if you didn't use the tuxedo black is with the light coloring. This is the ivory and these spaces are so little that I'm just kind of dabbing it just to keep it in there. We're not gonna blend with their skin on this because it's such a small space. Uh, her little hands, Jesus' face, and he precious. Okay, I think that's all of that. And then for the hay, both here, underneath him, I'm just gonna kind of flick. Um, a lot of times when you are, um, taking online classes for coloring uh, with alcohol markers, they teach you to, well, they teach you to, to blend in a circle. 
And I've learned not to do that because it desaturates the paper. Because every time you go from the dark into the light, dark into light, dark into light, it bleaches out the light and it really can look splotchy. So if you're getting splotches and you don't like it, the, the key to that is to go back in and do your whole layering all over again. So I just put a little bit there and I also like to pull towards myself. I can go both ways, but most people that I know are more comfortable out, or, you know, brushing or yeah, drawing or coloring away from you with little flicks. So I'm just, just kind of giving it little flicks. This is the base color. So that's, that's why I like this image is it's very, very simple. There's not a ton of blending in it. And these markers also, just so you know, they have a bullet nib, which I use the most. Um, but they also have this wide brushlet nib. Um, I find this nib works best, but it's when you need large spaces, but only use it on this side because the nib is actually very delicate. Um, so I use it very little um, because I love the bullet nib. So this is the darker. So darker is usually kind of underneath where you see the artist drawn lines. Now to think, of course, this is moonlight, not sunlight, but you know, from the stars. Um, so I'm just gonna give it, you know, a few flicks. Like I said, this isn't really a detailed project. This is a very beginner. Um, so I'm not doing tons of blending. If you would love to see more in-depth coloring, I am more than happy to teach you. Um, I love coloring with alcohol markers. I can do it all day long. Okay, so that was the ivory and the light crumb cake markers. Those don't come together. The ivory actually comes with a bronze so that you have two color tones that you can pick from. This here is our new cinnamon cider. This is an in color. Um, and so I've got light and dark cinnamon cider and I'm gonna use this for the wood. The wood is, oh, I forgot that that, let me use this one. The wood is directional, of course, and the artist really helps with this image. She puts, or he, I don't know, um, they put the lines, the, the lines already in there to give you texture. It also tells you like the grain of the wood. So I'm kind of doing just long straight lines with the grain of the wood, but I'm not filling it in. I'm leaving spaces because I'm gonna come in with multiple colors here. just long, narrow, and it does take time to, you know, to learn your, your thicker um, lines compared to your thinner, you know, which ones work best for you. This is a little darker, but you see it gives the look of real wood. It's okay to move your paper, just move it however is most comfortable for you. I guess I probably could, should leave it like that since you're watching me and learning from me. <laughs> but, you know, just so you can see that, and usually I would color this a lot closer to my, my eyes. Um, but, you know, this is for teaching purposes. It doesn't have to be Picasso. You don't have to be this expert. And this is the darker color, remember, I usually start with the light, but since I have it, I'm going to go ahead and do this little crochet. And then I'll go back in with the lighter and just put little strokes in there. Doesn't that make it look wood grain? Let me pull that up a little bit to the camera so you can see it. And I like leaving the white spaces. Um, if you're not crazy about them, you can always go in with a third brown. This is just one, the crumb, light crumb cake. And you can fill them in a little bit more. 
if you don't like them. I like them because they're kind of like, they're lights and darks. And this still, I mean, it gives you just more depth. So, you know, there's no, you don't have to have every single marker, you know, to have fun. Um, I'm going to do his, and actually, you know, that's such a small space. I'm going to go ahead and do it with the, this is dark crumb cake, or dark cinnamon cider. And go in here. This is a tiny space. So, just barely touch the cane here. And actually, I think I'm just gonna leave it the one color. It's the beautiful thing about art. Each one of them can be different and they're all beautiful. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, for little baby Jesus, I chose a yellow. This is Daffodil Delight, I believe. Yes, this is Light Daffodil. And I'm going to attempt to show you some shading here. With this such a small space, usually I try to leave some white in the center there. And then when you go in with the dark, you're just going to be going down around those edges and that little center makes it look like they're you know like the stars are shining off of them okay for mary we're gonna do the four colors of blue this gets a little bit more advanced um especially because it's such a small image i'm gonna go ahead and do her hair what color do, did we want her hair light cinnamon cider yeah, we'll just do her hair real quick here. Give him some color too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a little crumb cake just for those little highlights to fill that in. Just gives dimension when you have more than one color there. Okay, so with the lightest marker, I'm just gonna kind of sketch out where I want my lights and darks. So I'm gonna put this where I want the darks, and that way when I go over it with the darks, it will um, it will be covered up by the dark. I know that that's confusing, but trust me. Okay, so you're, you're not filling it in, you're just doing it where, like right here, her dress is down behind the hay. So that area is gonna have a darker shadow. Does that make sense? Okay, here, this fabric of the dress is behind this fabric here. So you're going to have that darker area under her sleeve is going to be darker. You know, behind her back will be darker. You, know, you got to think the sun, or in this case, the stars, are coming down this way. So it's going to bump off of it, and the areas away from it, like down here on the bottom, will be away from the light source. So they're gonna be darker on the bottom. So this is just kind of so I can look at it and say, you know, okay, I like that. I like that the highlights are gonna be here in her lap. There's gonna be some highlights here. There's gonna be a highlight in the center. Um, so I've got a good plan now with my light marker. So what I like to do is just slowly go darker. Um, and that way I can stop when I feel like I'm ready to stop. I'm pulling this a little bit more out now. I'm not as scared because I see where my dark dark is going to be. If that makes sense, I hope. Still leaving my highlight in the center. You don't want to let go of that. You want, you want some of that highlight. See under here, that's where I'll all be dark because it's under her, it's under her hands. But the top right there, there's gonna be some some starlight on there. Behind her face is gonna be a little darker. Okay. So that's all seaside spray, and you could stop right there. You could. Melanie rarely does, but you could. I like getting the depth and the dimension, and when you when you go deeper 
and you're not scared of the dark, ha, huh? pun intended, uh, my, my son would be proud of that one. He does, the, he's the king of pun, puns. Um, but I like going dark because it just gives an impact that you can't get with your lighter, lighter markers. I mean, can't you already tell? You can already tell there's movement there. And I'm just doing little touches. I'm not doing a whole crazy amount. I'm just thinking, where is the shadows? What is blocking? You know, what fabric is being blocked by the light? And in this case, starlight. Okay. Well, last but not least, the scary one. Dark. Very little bits. Okay, after I do this, I'm going to go backwards from dark to light. So we've got two layers going on here. And this is just a preference of mine. Some people don't. They don't do the second layer. I really like the second layer. So that was my darkest. So I'm going to go back down. And this is going to blend it into the next color. I'm actually picking, you know, pulling it. In this push, uh, in this situation, I'm pushing it, but, um, you know, bringing the dark out so that the colors eventually meet and they blend where they meet and they'll meet where the highlight is. So now we're going even lighter. We're going to pull a little farther. Pull, push, blend. That's, that's the whole idea of blends. Stampin' blends is, that's the beauty of alcohol, is it is totally movable. So I'm literally putting the pen, pen down and pushing and pulling. Does that, does that help? Okay, but I still have my highlights. You see where the sun's hitting. Stars, sorry. Okay, so now you can go willy-nilly over it. Okay, anywhere this light pen touches is gonna do have a bleaching effect because it has more alcohol in it than its darker siblings. So if you see this too much splotchiness, the only way to get rid of it, and there is a way to get rid of it, is to redo your layers. So I would start with the dark, and in this I probably wouldn't start with the dark, I'd probably start, you know, next to the dark, and just go back over it. I know it seems like a lot, and I mean, you don't have to do it. I just really like a good, solid blend. And the more, the more layers, as long as you've got quality paper. See, I'm not bleeding all the way through yet. If you turn this over and it's just huge blot of paper, then you might want to check your paper. Okay. I'm just going to use the next to the lightest just to cover up a little bit of where that's bleachy looking. Okay. I'm happy with that. All right, but she still has the light. She still has this light. She still has light on her head. All right, that was actually harder than Joseph is gonna be. Joseph, I've only used two colors. So I'm still gonna start with the lighter one. Here again, mapping out where those darks are gonna be. I'm envisioning the light still coming from this way. So things on the opposite side are going to be darker. And also this side, because it's away from the starlight. You can just go over some of these lines. 
See, see this, this image has the, the artist drawn lines in there for you. So you see the movement and you always want your, um, your stroke to be in the direction of what you're drawing. Like in this situation, it's clothing. So, you know, clothing falls and bends specific ways. And having artist drawn lines just makes it easier. Okay, so we're darkening areas that are away from the light or that are covered by the light. I mean, by the something like by fabric or all this bottom part, all this side. I mean, this is blocking. The crochet here is blocking his robe. Yeah, I was calling her thing a dress earlier. It's actually a robe. Not being too good with my words tonight, am I? That's under his chin, so that's probably darker. The back side of this. Okay. Still leave some where the light's going to hit it. And we'll fill that in a little bit. You probably, if you want a big color contrast here, you'd probably want to use Poppy Parade for this step, for your third color. I was just going, you know, for a, a, a royal, a, you know, a regal look, you know, I wanted rich colors. So it's all filled in now, but I'm gonna go ahead with the dark marker and just go and emphasize those bottoms, those areas that 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 we know are not getting any light at all. And that's it. That's your picture. I hope that's helped. If you enjoy this video, um, give me a thumbs up and feel free to leave me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Bye.